Hi, my name is Lester Rose, and I work with Laborers with Christ in the country of Haiti. And I want to walk you through some of the things that we're doing in the country uh, in the form of self-sustainable agriculture. And it's an exciting thing going on here. We work at an organization called the Consolation Center of Haiti. And uh, we came particularly, we being my wife and I, to help with self-sustainable education and, and nutritional education. And so now we are in the middle of uh, doing a lot of projects to continue to increase the self-sustainability of the Consolation Center. So it's uh, my privilege to be able to show you around and I'm looking forward uh, to share what God's doing here in Haiti. Thank you. One of the exciting newer projects that we have is a tilapia aquaponics project. The whole concept is that we're raising fish to introduce to the diet of the kids at the orphanage, but we've also uh, incorporated grow beds or wicking beds where when we have uh, fish water that's pretty nutrient dense because it's, it's where the fish live and we need to replenish with new water, we can put that into these wicking beds and we grow a, a garden variety vegetables in here. This particular setup is a, a new addition that had been donated by a church in Indiana and we're just getting ready to put dirt in here and start putting these into production. And uh, so it's an expansion that's happened just in the last couple months. Here you get an idea of what a grow bed looks like or a wicking bed looks like when it's already got the soil and we're able to uh, put plants into it. And then when, when it needs water, we add additional water through uh, the, fish, the fish water that's out there. Another thing that we're learning in Haiti is there's a lot of rainfall that keeps things wetter than we first anticipated. So we're not always adding that much water. And even now, it's a little damp because we got a rain, a couple good rains in the last couple of days. But um, where this really shines is later on when all the rains quit and we can grow garden variety vegetables in this environment because we have shade cloth above us and we're able to allow the plants to still um, go find the water that they need when everywhere else it's, it's uh, kind of dormant because of the heat and the lack of rainfall. And so in June and July, which is a few months away, this is just a, a huge opportunity to grow vegetables that nowhere else in the country are they able to grow them because they don't have the right conditions that allow that to happen. Over here there is uh, something called a filter bed. And the filter bed is uh, another way that we try and keep our fish water uh, within the tolerance that the fish are happy with it. This takes out, uh, it can help with some pH ad adjustment, but more of nitrates. It helps filter out nitrates. We can pump directly from the fish tanks into here and it filters through back into a reservoir. And so every couple days we would be able to clear, clean the water more so the fish stay in a, in a healthy environment. And we also use this to grow plants because we're finding that the, the fish water is so nutrient dense that it's almost like a, an aquaponics or a hydroponics process. So we put certain plants that really are good at, at growing almost in rocks. And uh, for example, something like an amaranth, which we call a pina, that's really popular here. And this is an ideal place for that type of plant to grow. We do have uh, new fish tanks that we're really excited about. We've been dealing with some struggles with our tanks because they were a poly tank and the sun in Haiti is so hard on those tanks that they were cracking like real easy. So we replaced them with the concrete tanks. Right now we've uh, just purchased 600 small fry and uh, we've got them in our two tanks here and as they grow we'll separate them out in two weeks, we're buying 600 more and we'll, we'll expand into this side of our, our fish tanks. All these are tilapia. And uh, we, we usually grow these for about five months and they're the right size for a couple of kids to get a meal off of one fish. And so our, our ideal time of having the fish is, is five months, replenish with new fish and then we're getting at least Two, two rotations a year, maybe two and, you know, a third rotations, depending on how things go. Fun project. So self-sustainable agriculture is a, a fun concept, 
But when you come into a country like Haiti, and we did soil, soil samples to get an idea of what kind of a nutrient level was in the soil, we realized that they had virtually um, zero levels of nutrient. And so it became apparent that there was a need to go into some sort of production of animals that would give us manure, that would help us um, make amendment to the soil to give us higher levels of nutrients. And so we, we went to egg, or excuse me, went to chickens right away. A lot of them were egg layers because then the, the eggs are protein for the diets of the, of the girls and boys in the orphanage. At one point, we, we have enough of a surplus that we sell eggs at some grocery stores. The other thing that we do is we uh, grow uh, a broiler, or they call them meat chickens, and we get these when they're about a day or two old, raise them for eight weeks, and then butcher them. And both of those are means for us to eventually use the fertilizer, the manure from the animal, to uh, throw out on the farm. And as you see from some of the aerial views, there's some really interesting crops being grown right now, and a lot of that wouldn't be possible without the manure levels that we're getting from the animals on, in the project. The importance of diversity agriculturally is always um, something that we're trying to do. We have uh, turkeys, we have ducks, we have guineas. We're taking chickens that have uh, pretty much timed out as layers in a confinement setting, and now we're putting into a, a, a non-confinement, more of a roaming setting with, with roosters to try and maybe uh, start a next generation of layers, and or certainly uh, give us another uh, source of eggs. But all this is just kind of experimental to see what we can uh, come up with and how well they do in the country of Haiti. And it, it's uh, fun for the kids. The kids like to come around, look and see what's here and gives them a, a greater sense of, uh, you know, the things that are available. So uh, Catherine and I, through Labors with Christ and, and our family early on, spent some time in the country of Nigeria. And uh, when we were in Nigeria, that was one of the things that I learned a lot about was tropical, self-sustainable agriculture. And it's a little bit of a strange concept to us in the Midwest because in those countries they have way too much sun. And so the plants get hammered pretty much because of the amount of sunlight um, in, in, in these African countries near the equator or say Haiti because uh, the sun's so intense. In the Midwest we don't have that kind of an issue, but it becomes uh, something where we do greenhouses in the Midwest. Here I call this a reverse greenhouse. So instead of containing sun by a traditional greenhouse, we are reflecting sun by a shade cloth. So this becomes a nursery that instead of getting 100% solar strength, we're down maybe 50% solar strength. And as we share later with some of the things that we're growing, almost exclusively everything that's now in the field growing was started in this greenhouse. And this greenhouse has proven to be a really, really special tool. And it's not something that a lot of the Haitians were familiar doing. So it's something that Labors with Christ has introduced in a form of trying to increase self-sustainable agriculture. And, you know, there's varying levels of success of what we try to introduce. But this one really is a, has been a well-received uh, concept. And now we're, as you can see, the greenhouse is about 20 foot long. Now we're going to double it. Part of the next thing that we'll do is uh, double the size of this because they say that they're, they're trying to grow more vegetables and they need more space. In the last two years, we've uh, had a professional school start. And, and professional school is training of, of young adults in professions that are more of a vocational training kind of atmosphere. So. We're doing something agriculturally now at the Consolation Center where we have students who are considered professional students. So I'm standing in the middle of a field where a lot of this work is being done now by students that come for class. And as you can see, I'm in uh, cabbage. The cabbage does really good this time of year. Over here are tomatoes. Got two different varieties of tomatoes, something that's like a beef steak. The other one is aroma. Romas are really popular in Haiti. We are uh, 
doing lettuce, we're doing beets, doing eggplant, we're doing okra. But something that I want to point out that is really important in a country like Haiti, not only are we trying to grow a lot of vegetables, but in this case, we're intercropping. So we have leaf lettuce here, and underneath it, we're growing beets. And that's an ideal situation because you're growing a root crop that can develop while you're still harvesting leaves off of a, an above ground crop. And uh, we don't do that a whole lot in the U.S. because we're not challenged with land or nutrients, but where they're putting a strip of compost here and these plants are able to benefit from that compost, they're, they're trying to get as much of a, an advantage from that small area as possible. So when people look at this and say, well, why is there one purple plant when the rest of them are green? Well, it's intentional here because we, we're, we're gonna intercrop and get as much as we can, but it has to be the right type of plants or the competition would be detrimental to, to being able to grow them. The winter months in Iowa, roughly, in Haiti, it's also their, their winter season. And usually November, December, January, February, March are all the coolest months in the country. And 90% and of growth, as far as garden variety vegetables, take place because the climate's conducive to do that here in Haiti. So all the things that we've been talking about we're right in the middle of that season and uh, here we have green pepper that we're growing. We're, we're also starting to use a lot of mulch to try and help with weed control. Uh, virtually this is 100% organic. Uh, we don't do much with chemicals, can't afford chemicals. There's not a lot of chemicals available. Uh, we try and do some special weed or uh, excuse me, some special insect control by maybe using something like a neem plant or pepper, pepper spray. But uh, weed control is, is labor intense or it's using something like mulch. This is called vetifer grass. It's the root system for vetifer grass. And that's a byproduct in this country because they use this uh, vetifer grass to extract es essential oils. And once they extract that essential oil, they got all these root systems that they just want to go dump somewhere. So now we're bringing quite a bit of this on site to help with weed control and water retention. And then this here is um, eggplants. In the U.S., a lot of people don't care much for eggplant, but, but this country absolutely has an infatuation with eggplants. And they do a lot of stuff with sauce that they put over rice. And uh, as you can see here on the garden, we're growing quite a bit of it. And there's, um, it's just a real popular plant. So we do a lot where we try and generate interest back home to get seeds called Seeds of Faith. I know that the Laborers with Christ puts out a monthly email and that monthly email describes some of the needs that we have to continue to, to offer seeds, not just to Haiti, but to Nigeria also and uh, we'll give you more information about that a little later on here in our in our video sharing how you can get in touch with us or get on that um, get on the website or get on our monthly email so you can keep better in touch with what we're doing here in AD. We're probably sitting on around uh, 12 acres of land total that we're that is on site where the orphanage is located and some of it is owned some of it is rented the, some of it is currently planted, some of it's just been plowed, as in the case of this field, we're getting ready to work this so we can plant, uh, plant uh, beans or corn, uh, black beans or corn. The pile of rock behind me is the beginning phase of uh, a goat project. We're, we're hoping to get more involved with raising goats and, and uh, we've talked about the, the value of goat milk I'm not sure how that's going to all work out yet because that's a concept that doesn't seem to be real popular in Haiti. But uh, these type of projects, there's always a need to continue to expand and, and continue to uh, you know, fix up and renew. So uh, we're always happy if there's people that have a desire to help us financially in, uh, in supporting the projects agriculturally.
So it's been a joy to show you around and to give you an, uh, an idea of what's going on here in Haiti. To give you kind of a, a list of needs, we're, we're always looking for ongoing sponsorship of agricultural programs, whether it's uh, help with fuel to, to run the tractor or seed to plant uh, on the land that's associated with the center of help or uh, continuing to expand projects here. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a need for that and uh, we're really interested in people reaching out to us and getting a more detailed list of what that would look like. You can uh, contact us through our website at laborswithchrist.org and we'll put a link on uh, this video to give you an idea to how to contact us. You can also uh, get a hold of me at my email address. And that is uh, F-A-A-G-R-I-C at yahoo.com. I'll say it one more time. We'll probably show it as well. F-A-A-G-R-I-C at yahoo.com.